Hi, I'm um, back with uh, this project and I've finished priming this. So if you look at this, uh, the pieces, you can see that it's kind of uh, rough looking. Um, it's got that flat finish after I've primed it. Even though I sprayed a fairly heavy wet coat to it, it's still gonna dry very very flat so if you feel this it just feels kind of rough now when you're painting every uh, especially since you if you're using an airbrush uh, it's very very thin layers of paint so every layer of paint will inherit from the previous layer so what happens there is if you have any surface defects dust or a rough looking surface that next layer of paint will inherit that so to fix this, I'm going to go ahead and just use a very light sanding um, mesh or a um, or one of these uh, 320 sanding pads. Dip it with some water. And let's start off with the arm would be a good example to start off with. And I get to slightly wipe it. Now this might be a little too heavy of a grit. And you'll see as I get down to some of the detail areas, I might sand a little too much of the detail, or sand a little. I might sand some of the primer away. So what I can do is not use something so rough as this, but use a one of these sanding meshes. I think this is rated at maybe a thousand. So and this one I could just. Be a little bit more um, heavy handed when I'm wiping her uh, the parts. Now I'm going to go ahead and wipe this clean. Um, you might be able to use a paper towel too to do this because paper towel has you know some roughness to it. Now you see that it's dried. And the surface is a little bit shinier so and you feel the surface it's very very smooth from here I would double check if I had any issues but if I didn't have any issues I could go ahead and paint right on here because this is a very very smooth smooth surface I'm gonna take a closer look and see if there's any sanding mistakes and there are right here um, I could even run my fingernail across it there are some sanding, uh, there are some rough sanding spots right here. I can see that, and it'll be, it's easily seen in, in um, the primer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the my 40 or my 320 grit. Now this I don't even have to worry about wet sanding. And I'm gonna sand a little heavier here. Might need to use the. Yeah, I'm gonna have to use the little higher grit sand, sanding pad. So I'm not gonna use the 100. I'm gonna try to use the 150. This will end up taking a decent amount of the primer off. And this goes along to the idea that. Um, you're going to go through a process of sand, putty, sand. So as I sand this, you can see the scratches where the where I sanded, where, sanded the way the mold line, and you can see where the putty is, or the primer is still in there. So I'm going to slightly, slightly sand this away. Finger, hopefully, run my finger through it. And hopefully, it's gone. If you run a fingernail test, is usually a pretty good way to check if. You've gotten something 
sand it down because your fingernail will catch onto any of those small little bumps. And this piece is ready for repriming because this area I need to reprime it to match everything up. Now I'm going to do a comparison between these two pieces. I'm going to take the my very high grit sanding mesh. All I'm doing is wiping down I want to hit all the folds This is a piece that in the previous videos I uh, filled in the holes with the light carrying putty. And now you have a comparison between that piece, this piece, and this un, I guess, polished piece. So this is ready for paint. The surface is nice and smooth. And this is still got a little bit of a you know, rough texture to it. Now for those folks painting high gloss finish, this is where you get that importance of um, the surface preparation to make sure that it's ready for that high gloss finish. If you have this rough surface and paint that, you know, that gloss over this, it's going to inherit that and you're going to have like semi-gloss and sort of not too you know, not very high gloss finish here I'm gonna take a quick check on this to make sure all the mold lines are gone any issues with this part are taken care of and this looks good now since I didn't have to re-sand anything or or I didn't have to you know touch up any of the areas this part is ready for, you know, just straight up paint. I don't need to reprime this, so I'm going to set this, place this in a separate area. Now here, as I look through this part, it looks like there might be a pinhole on the surface. Uh, I don't know how easy that is to see. But if I move it around, you might be able to see where that pinhole is. Now for these uh, little um, problems, the pinholes are usually a bubble that you know didn't degas when this uh, resin was being uh, cured. So what it looks like, it's basically a bubble, and this pinhole is just the top of that bubble. So if you were to putty over it, it's got this whole space inside that you don't see that the putty sits on top of and when you go to sand there's nothing for it to grab so the putty will just come right off. So to fix this we're gonna take a knife and cut that hole open so it's like this and then from there we can put the putty inside or over the entire place and it has that whole surface area to pick up the to grab onto. I'll find my hobby knife and using the point of my hobby knife, I could kind of find where that hole is and I could dig it out. So now that I have this hole dug out, I'm going to go get my light curing putty. So for this, the lights will go off except for my top lights 
So this will go dark. I have my light cream putty here. Take a small amount of the light cream putty out. a platinum surface. Turn my light back on. I'm gonna bring my light down a little bit. And this will cure very, very quickly. Give it a little bit of a check. Yeah, it's pretty much cured. So again, wipe away some of the excess. The excess oils or and this putty is cured solidly. I'm going to bring my light back up so it's out of the way. And I'm going to go ahead and sand this down. And you notice how quick this process is. Um, if I was doing this with epoxy putty and applied the putty, waited overnight for it to cure, sanded it down to only have it pop right off to the part. I would have to start the process over and wait another night while the, that you know, epoxy put it cured. And this process would take forever. So I want to sand this down so that the original part or the putty is not built up an extra detail around the original part. It's higher grit sanding. I could run my fingernail across this to check. That seems pretty good. And do my polishing with my very, very high grit sanding pad. Oh, this is ready for some primer. I'm going to take a look at the rest of this to see if there's any other defects. There doesn't seem to be any other defects, so I'm going to go ahead and wipe this down. And now I get to take my sanding pad and try not to perv out as I wipe this kit. Again, this is all in the name of surface prep. However perverted this does look. As I sand the inside of her thigh, you can see that there's some of the rough sanding spots right here where the you know the primer is showing up you know in inside this uh, the rough sanding spots so this is an area where I didn't uh, spend enough time sanding smooth after I got rid of that mold line using the very very low grit sanding stick so I'm going to go in here and Hopefully smooth that out and then reprime that and that should be gone.
Wow, the paint chipped right off here. You see this? So that tells me that there's just a little bit of mold release here. And hopefully I could sand this area. touch up sanding I'm gonna go ahead and prime reprime these parts so I'm ready to prime these parts now or reprime them since I've finished sanding and fixing some issues so I'm gonna start off with this um, arm piece and go ahead and prime over this I'm gonna do what I did uh, before light misting coat over the general area and then spray heavier and you should be able to see that that um, fixed area is um, gone or you can't see the putty mark anymore.
and now these parts have been primed for the second time and the second time was a very, very quick uh, priming session as only um, the areas that needed to be fixed were primed so this is going to sit overnight and we'll it's been about a day since I last uh, was working on this and I've reprimed this and now that the surface is back to that rough you know feel to it so I'm going to take my sanding pad and do what I did yesterday just kind of wipe the surface of the kit to smooth out everything dry it off now I could go ahead and examine and see if the areas I fixed yesterday have been have stayed fixed or if there are any new problems I'm riddled with pinholes all over this uh, figure right here so I'm gonna take my knife and kind of poke out where those pinholes are and start popping them open again the reason why I'm popping or exposing these pinholes is because the bubbles just under just the beginning of the problem the the actual bubbles under the surface now I'm gonna drop the light pick up my light curing putty Let's see if I can't fix this quickly. Okay, now that putty has been applied, I'm going to turn my light back on. And for the purpose of this, I'm going to use a separate light source so we can capture this process. Away the excess oils, which leaves me with just the putty, and I'm going to go in with a now this light curing putty cures up to be about as soft as the resin is so it's a very good median to use as a filler because when you're sanding it it sands about the same level Now I want to sand down to about where you see that hole being filled. And that will give you a general idea that this has been, uh, you don't have too much putty on top of the, the part. And once you prime this to check for the, check for the fix, you'll be able to see that um, the putty is not you didn't, add, you didn't have too much putty on top of that area and you don't have an overlap. Another check, you can run your fingernail across it in all directions and make sure and that has been filled.
as I've uh, sanded away, there's still a little bit of a bubble from this putty mark here, which happens every so often. So I'm gonna clean that out best as I can. And reapply some putty there. Since it's a very small area, I'm gonna apply very, I'm gonna try to apply a small amount of the putty. So now, this is ready for another priming session. So now that I have this puttied, I can go ahead and prime this and see if, um, if I fixed all the pinholes. light misting layer and I can spray a little heavier now after priming this I can see that right about here I have um, some excess putty that needs to be sanded away but the rest of it looks pretty good there's a little bit of putty right about there that I will have to sand, sand down but other than that, I think I hit all the pinholes. It looks a lot better than it did before.